Hello and welcome. I've had several requests for instruction in a simple Nuno Phelps scarf or wrap, which I'll proceed to show you in this video. First up, the materials that you will need. I've got um, plain black Georgette and some merino silk blend in autumnal colours, as well as some silk hankies that I've dyed myself, which I may or may not use. The silk Georgette is over 3 metres long by 60 wide. The merino silk blend has a lovely combination of colours, golds and pinks, a little bit of purple and grey, and with this lovely sh silk sheen running right through it. And the silk hankies I've dyed using raspberry and gold. With these materials I am to make a very simple but elegant felt scarf. With your fabric you're going to have to take this selvage off. And the way to do that is just give it a little snip at the end. And just tear it off. I like to take the selvages off because they tend not to felt very well. So then, just need to lay out your fabric. And you don't have to be too fussed about wrong or right side. And what I do in terms of my merinos, I like to divide it to make sure that I have enough. You can just split it down the middle like that. I've got about 50 grams of this merino silk, by the way. And we'll see how much of it I have left at the end. I'm going to aim to lay the wool very finely so that I have a very sheer felted fabric. Uh, I like to make the scarf rustle and it will be quite interesting to make felt rustle. I'm going to work in, in manageable lengths so I might split it again. And I might make these lengths shorter and you'll you'll realize why I do that once you start to work and I'm going to lay the merino silk very finely I like to lay going in all directions as you can see I'm working very short lengths to vary the direction that I lay the merino I'm going to try and allow the fabric the Georgette to actually peer through here and there I've changed direction here I might go that way here The reason why I do this is that um, when it's felted, you'll have a, a nicely blended fabric. You can see now why it's easier to work in short lengths because it's going to actually tug at that layer that's already down there. I 
you'll find too that it's easier to actually start furthest from you so that when you lean over you're not actually leaning across from what you've actually already laid. I'll keep on um, laying out and um, get back to you when it's all done. Catch up then. I've been going almost an hour now and I'll show you how far I've come along. If you're going to work with the Merino Silk Blend, just beware that it's not very easy to work with. And this particular blend has Tussar Silk, which is very different to Mulberry Silk. It, it tends to be more fibrous. And I find that the, the silky bits stick out more. They're longer. The fibres are actually longer than the, than the wool. When I get to the edge here, what I'm going to do is actually tuck it in so it gives me a nice finish on my edge. As I've been laying in the fibres, I've been squinting my eyes as the Impressionist painters did painting a landscape, just to get an idea of how all the colours are going to blend together. I've finished the laying out. Um, the fabric piece is around 3 metres by 60 centimetres wide and I've ended up using around 30 grams of the Merino Silk Blend. I've got this back this much left. Now I've decided that I'm not going to use the silk hankies after all. So I'm just going to go ahead with wetting this down and start to roll it. Okay, I've got um, a half a bucket of water. Um, what is at room temperature? Uh, and I've squirted some shampoo into the bucket. It's um, cheap shampoo, I wouldn't use it on my hair, but it's great for the wool and silk. I also have a spray bottle, a spray bowl actually. I'm going to fill it and put down the surface. These bottles are really great. I keep calling it a bottle, even though it's a bowl. Um, because you can spray it on and it won't actually move the surface very much. You don't need a great deal of water. I like to put less than more. You want the surface wet but you don't want it too saturated. As it will actually hamper the felting. Okay, now I'm going to put the plastic on. What you'll need is a painter's drop sheet. I've cut this from a, a bigger sheet and I'm hoping that I've got it off. Just 
gently push it out. You don't want any air bubbles in it. Just be very gentle with it at this stage because the surface will move. Okay, I'm just going to wet the surface. And just gently get the air bubbles out. When you do this too, you'll, you'll see how wet the surface of the work is. Try and use the flat of your hand and I go up and down and perpendicular. You don't want any of this. So use the flat of your hand, go up and down. I've smoothed out the surface and I can see there are still areas that could use more water but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to turn the whole piece over. Um, before I do that I'm just going to cut the plastic at the edge of the fabric here so that it's, it's a little bit easier for me to, to flip it over. I'm going to use one of these flotation rollers. Um, and I use these for rolling. Just going to be careful at the edge here. I'm going to take it up. Um, the piece is actually quite wet. I can see this as I'm rolling. So I'm, I'm touching the surface just to check for wetness and I'm, I'm not going to put any more water on. I feel it's wet enough. Okay, so now I'm going to cover it with plastic with the help of my plastic. Ideally, you want to cover the whole work so that you've got quite a bit of plastic all around. Okay, I've got most of the air bubbles out and I'm just going to gently rub the surface for a couple of minutes. You've got the whole palm of your hand to use. Before giving it a good once over with this foot massager, which I find is an excellent tool. Okay, I've given um, the fabric a good rubbing with this and now I'm going to move on to rolling. I'm going to have to fold it to take it up on the roller and you need to be careful that you don't have creases. Oop, my silvages.
and I'm going to do 250 rolls, counting as I go. I've done about 250 rolls and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it off the roller. I'm going to use this to actually explain. I've been rolling width wise. So I'm going to take it off the roller and take it up from this end and roll it lengthwise. And once I've finished 250 on that side, I'll also be taking it up again on this end for 250, take it off the roller again and take it up from this end for 250. And once I've done that round, I would have done 1,000 rolls. Now I'll do this for about 5,000. Um, I know from the way that I roll that usually if I do 5,000 rolls I'll get a, a pretty good pre-felt fabric. But um, I suspect because the merino has such a high um, count of um, silk in it that's going to take more than 5,000 rolls. But uh, I don't know until I've actually done the 5,000 um, at what stage I'll be at at the end of it. So, um, anyway, that's what I proceed to do now. So I'll take it off, take it off the roller. And when you're first doing it, just be a little, a little mindful when you're actually doing this because you want to take up, you want, you want to take it off with all the plastic. You don't want part of it to get stuck. And also, make sure that you've got both sides of the plastic. Otherwise, you might find that you've taken one side of the plastic off and you've actually got um, your felt exposed on one end. So here I go for another 250 rolls. I've done 5,000 rolls. Um, I'm just going to have a, uh, a peep at the, the surface of the felt to see how it's going. I, I suspect it's not ready, but I, I just want to show you um, where it's at. The whole while that I've been um, rolling, I've actually had the wool side towards the bubble, if you haven't understood that. Um, okay, so I'm checking the back of it to see whether the fibres have migrated through um, the, the georgette and that's what you're looking for with Nuno felt. You need the, the fibre to go through the fabric, which, which, you can, which I can see. You'll be able to see it as well as, as tug on it. So it's, it's happening but it's not quite there. And then Check the surface and I can see areas where it's it's a little bit bubbled. It's bubbled which means that it, it hasn't actually gone through the fabric. See where it's it's bubbled here and it's also a little bit dry. So it can use a, a bit more soap and water. So what I might actually do is I might actually flip it back over onto its back and just soak the surface a little bit and maybe give it a little bit more water but not much. I flipped the fabric over so that um, the wall side is top up. I've got a bit of soap. I'm just going to rub the soap over the surface. Especially where it's very soft and I can move it. So I'm going to go over it, over it with a fine tooth comb of soap and just, um, just to make sure that um, when I start to roll again I've got those areas that um, are a little bit loose. So once I've done that the plastic will go back on, I'll flip the whole thing over again onto so that the wool side is facing the bubble 
and I'll do um, a few more thousand rolls and then um, check back with you. Here's a little tip on how to treat stubborn areas. Um, you get yourself a freezer bag and dampen it a little bit. And um, just rub gently on the area that's giving you pain in the direction that you've laid the fibre. There you go. I'm done here. I'm going to take it off the roller and check it again. Again, we're checking to see whether the fibres have come through. And you can hear it and you can, you can see it. And then the top side. You see that it's it's actually adhered to the surface. So that's not bad. The reason why it's taking so long is that um, there's a lot of silk carted into the merino. And also it hasn't helped that I've laid the wool on very finely. What I'm going to do now is just take the top plastic off. And just rub the surface supported by the plastic. You'll start to notice as you, you rub that the fibres will, will show up even more through the fabric. And also you might notice too that it's, it's starting to, to shrink. It becomes very stretchy. So I'm just going to give a gentle rub like this all over and then turn it with the fabric side down. At the side I'm going to trim the edges, just neaten them up a little bit. on top of the, the wool surface. You're going to start to be vigorous with it. You can pick it up, pretend you're giving it a gentle wash. Shake it out. It's actually getting to be quite a nice laminated fabric. This is the wool side before I start to shrink it. You can see that the fibre has really stuck. And on the other side, you can actually see also that the colours started to come through. And this is what you want. The whole point of Nuno felt is to allow the fibres to migrate through the fabric onto the other side. So now, when I start to shrink it, it will actually, um, the wool will shrink and take up the fabric with it. 
I think it's ready to actually give it a lingerie bath and shrink, try and shrink it. My hands don't look very pretty. Okay, I've got my bucket and it's um, half full with some warm water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scarf, plunge it in and just give it a gentle movement like I'm washing my underwear. It's just very gentle. Just for a couple of seconds. And then I'll take it out. I'll squeeze it, squeeze the water out. I can see that the dye from the fabric is running and I'm a bit concerned that that's going to affect my colours. I hadn't anticipated that because it's commercially bought um, silk shit, so it really shouldn't run. Okay, what happens is that your, your fabric will start to shrink and when I take it out of the water, still with the wool side down, I'll start to rub again. I'll alternate between dipping it in warm water and rubbing until I get the scarf the size that I want. I haven't been rubbing it for very long at all and I've just done a quick uh, measure of the piece just to give me an idea of how much I need to shrink and it's actually 42 centimeters wide now and around 2 meters 30 long so already it started, it's started to shrink. Um, I think I, I want to get it no shorter than 2 meters and maybe shrink about another 5 centimeters off the width. So that's, that's what I'm working towards. Um, so I'll keep rubbing and dipping in warm water until I've roughly got my scarf that size. Just want to show you what to do if your edges start to roll in. Just pull it out like that. Just see how that's rolling in there? Just pull it out. It's very stretchy so you shouldn't be afraid of it. I'm about done with the shrinking. I've actually taken a little bit more of the width than I wanted. It's closer to 30 centimetres. Um, I'm now going to um, wash it. Um, and what I usually do is stretch it onto a towel and then let it dry. Okay, once it's washed, I get a clean towel and I stretch it into shape on the towel. I'm going to smooth out your edges. roll up into the towel like this. This just gets the excess water out. And that's it. I'll catch up with you to show you the piece when it's dry. The colours have blended nicely. You can still see the sheer of the, the Georgette coming through. Nice and sheer here. There's barely fibre on the, the surface, but what's there has actually caught the fabric. You can see with the edge, you can leave it raw and just allow the, the fibre to finish it off for you. Here it's quite sheer. And this is what I really love about um, Nuno, the fact that it can be sheer and, and with barely any fibre there. And on the back side, this is what you should aim for. The fibre's actually gone right through and it's coloured the black. Here it is, the finished piece. It shrank um, more than I wanted to width-wise, but lengthwise just under two meters, um, a 30 wide. 
I set out to do a simple yet elegant scarf and I think I've achieved it. I also wanted to make the piece rustle. I can hear it. So what that means to me is that it's, it's light, it's flexible and it's actually quite nice to put on. And if you have skin allergies to wool, you know, you can always wear the Georgette side against your skin. There you go. You could wear it as a light wrap, but it's really meant to be a skull. Here you have a lightweight woolen silk Nuno felted scarf that weighs under 55 grams.